All right, welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about thinkers that defined my life. And by this, what do I mean? I mean, not just thinkers that had cool ideas that I was interested in, but thinkers whose paradigm and way of looking at the world really became a frame for my life, at least for a while until a new thinker came and his ideas transformed the way I look at the world and allowed a new phase of my life to start. So I can really separate my life by phases in which one thinker was dominant. And so this is what we can look at. So thinker number one is Rudolf Steiner. He's a relatively obscure philosopher and esoteric mystic. Here is a picture of him. Why was I influenced by this guy at all? It's because, so he's, a, he's an Austrian philosopher and he founded this uh, school called the Wald Waldorf School or, or Rudolf Steiner School has two names and my my mother and her parents were kind of influenced he's still quite influential in Switzerland and there are schools uh, of, of this type worldwide and I went to one of these schools so uh, this is why I was impacted by him but I would say it, it was also my character, my personality that led me to become interested in, in his writings. And uh, there are hundreds of books that are transcripts of his lectures. He was popular about 100 years ago. I would say um, a kind of a Jordan Peterson of his era, if you wish, um, because he had this kind of rhetorical abilities and people wanted to listen to him and, and so on. And um, he was influential to me in, in two ways, in a way. Um, one is his core philosophical book called uh, The Philosophy of Freedom, which in a sense for me became a training ground in thinking clearly because I read that book multiple times and I was really, I, I think it's the book that I read most seriously in my life uh, because I was really trying to understand, okay, here he opens the loop uh, and then looking down the pages, okay, where does he answer the question and interlinking everything. So I, uh, this is kind of, was kind of my the way I started thinking philosophically if you will and then there is also a bit of a problematic aspect of uh, Rudolf Steiner which is that he has a, a kind of a huge spiritualistic worldview which is based on the assumption or that it is possible to develop organs that perceive spiritual realities beyond the physical and he claimed that he possessed them and basically um, much of what he talked was certain kind of a revelation. If you go deep into that worldview, it's, uh, it's kind of Tolkien squared, I call it. It's a huge, integrated, spiritualistic worldview with a lot of spiritual beings that... <laughs> um, it's a huge world and, uh, and it kind of explains everything in, in reality that's going on and history in the past. And so it's a huge rabbit hole and I was reading a lot of those books. So he, he was the thinker that impacted me the most until uh, my early 20s. And I was really looking for answers uh, about everything in his books. A few honorable mentions. Jeremy Rifkin was also a kind of impactful for me. Uh, his book that came out, I think in the 90s, uh, called Hydrogen Economy, where he talked about uh, the future uh, being um, a future based on, on hydrogen. Probably it's not going to be like that as it looks uh, right now, but still, um, this, this, this approach towards a decentralized way of producing energy, I think it's, um, it's still valid. And so it was for me an early introduction into this systemic way of thinking. And this other person that impacted me on a more personal level is Marshall B. Rosenberg's book, uh, Nonviolent Communication, uh, where I guess for the first time I learned about a way to interact with other people that is wiser than what one just learns normal education. And then what happens during my studies, I kind of the, the Rudolf Steiner paradigm started to approach its limits in the sense that I was not able to find all the answers uh, for, for, my, for my life in, in, in his books. And I kind of put that a bit aside and started exploring other things and in a sense living my own life and making experiments. And then YouTube kind of became a bigger and bigger part of my life and uh, I kind of encountered all these uh, online, like these new atheists. Uh, foremost for me was Sam Harris. For me Sam Harris was always a pleasure to listen to and he always gave me the impression of someone who is serious and honest. And, and for me it was kind of a new 
way of looking at the world is kind of skeptical and more grounded and, and more intellectual and rational way of looking at the world. And always being intellectually honest about this is what I really know and the rest is speculation. We can speculate as much as we want, but we need to be clear and honest about the fact that it is speculation. And uh, this is the, the period that, that made me a bit uh, more critical towards grand statements and, and, and that kind of thing. Honorable mentions, Karl Popper, which is of course related. It's this concept of uh, falsifiability that is kind of for me a gateway uh, with respect to Rudolf Steiner in the sense that I know that this whole spiritualistic worldview, which still is kind of attractive to me because it's huge explanatory power, um, but I know that it is not falsifiable. I know that it's, it's one of those worldviews that once you believe it, there is no way out of it. There is no counter evidence that can prove you that you're wrong. Another thinker that was really impactful was Nassim Taleb. And I'm again putting these as honorable mentions because they had basically, I, I didn't spend a lot of time reading their books and, and going too deep into their concepts, but they had a few concepts that were really impactful and, and kind of changed the way I look at the world. So Nassim Taleb's concept of anti-fragility is kind of a schema, a way of thinking that I apply a lot in my life. It's the opposite of the golden mean, right? Like often uh, when it's a choice between A and B, usually the answer is, okay, somewhere in between, an average between the two, the golden mean, right? Aristotle's uh, concept. But anti-fragility is actually the opposite of that. So sometimes actually you really need to go to invest on the bo on the extremes and the golden mean is actually where uh, it's it's not right to be an example would be if you want to invest in the economy it's actually a bad idea to have a diversified portfolio wi within semi risky things because that's uh, basically where you're most vulnerable to being taken out by a kind of a big catastrophic event uh, Nassim Taleb's black swan and so the better option is to kind of invest part of your money into something that's extremely safe and then invest part of your money into something that's extremely risky that you already basically count on losing it but uh, you, you since you invested the, the rest of your money into something that's very safe you you don't rely on that money but if you're lucky uh, then the upside is huge so Nassim Taleb's concepts really helped me understand that there are situations in life where you can have your cake and eat it too, actually. And that and that and that is actually the best strategy. One way I'm doing this, for example, is with my channel and my entrepreneurial thing. On one hand, I have my day job, it's, see, it's safe. And then I use uh, my free time to do crazy experiments, to invest time in a YouTube channel, to, to try to be entrepreneurial and all these kinds of things. I already count that this will all fail. It's okay. Um, but then perhaps there is some opportunity that I wouldn't have found otherwise. So that's an example. So this has been really powerful concept, but I haven't read all his books. And the next one is obviously Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson is really someone who hijacked my life uh, and kind of brought an end to the era of uh, full skepticism, full uh, Sam Harris, um, atheism, that kind of thing. Uh, he kind of brought back a bit of this old, uh, of, of what I had in the past, which was this openness towards something that is beyond mere rationality. His kind of mythological approach, psychological mythological approach uh, is extremely compelling to me. And it was kind of like a vortex of curiosity because I, I mean, I stumbled upon him through Sam Harris interview with him and then I I don't know why I just started watching his stuff and I couldn't stop and I went deeper and deeper. And so this is how he basically just became extremely influential. And it was almost despite myself, despite my rational worldview, um, the interest that I felt towards what he was saying was almost the proof to me that there was something there that um, his analysis of the landscapes of meaning and, and that kind of thing um, actually had some truth to them. So there was, was a kind of self-referential effect going on there. Again, like he really changed my life in the sense that I had been trying to be entrepreneurial and I was thinking of giving up. And he kind of motivated me to go back instead of going like full-time career in computer science to spend some time 
investing in culture and reading books and talking about them and um, this is actually how the youtube channel started talking about books and then transformed into something where i wanted to learn to get better at speaking and and this was all related to to jordan peterson's idea that speaking is uh, one of the most powerful things there are and so it's worth investing in that honorable mentions obviously Carl Jung and again like he uh, Carl Jung is very influential I even went to Jungian therapy but I cannot say that he has been defining in my life as has have been these other people um, probably behind the scenes but I haven't read all his books and been reading his stuff all the time I, I read a few of his books but I guess I've learned about him more through other people like like Rudolf Steiner but also mainly Jordan Peters. Our honorable mentions are this Eric Weinstein and, and Brett Weinstein, the, the two brothers. Um, they are interesting sparring partners um, of Jordan Peterson within this conversation that is the intellectual dark, dark web and uh, I, I kind of find it interesting that they have insights and opinions that don't precisely overlap with Jordan Peterson, but they all believe, including obviously Sam Harris, is still influential in my life. Um, all these people have this core value of, we need to be able to have an honest conversation and we need to be able to offend people w while we do so because thinking is chaotic. And, and this core value of intellectual honesty, I think, is what makes these people interesting to be this, this intellectual dark web. And now recently, I would say one week ago, I think this is a conjecture, I, I might have found someone new. Um, someone who is able to kind of take all the things, all the little bits that I've seen until now, you know, a bit of Nassim Taleb, a bit of Sam Harris, a bit of Jordan Peterson and all these people and kind of put them together in an even higher paradigm. And this person is um, Jordan Hall. I have to thank Eric Weinstein for mentioning him on his Twitter. Otherwise, I wouldn't have learned about this guy. And since I learned about him, uh, so this is Jordan Hall, I've been watching all his YouTube videos. I mean, I already watched them all. It's not that many. And I'm watching all his interviews and I'm planning to read all his blog posts. And I, I really have to ponder that. And obviously, I'm going to make videos about this because his way of looking at the world is is on another level. And the interesting thing is that it has an impact both on how one should live one's life individually, so it's relevant to personal development, the thing that we have been talking about, but at the same time it's relevant to um, the cultural changes that have been going on, the way we relate to each other, so at all levels of culture and civilization in a sense. Um, and so I'll be talking about this uh, more because this is really about a new way of being and something extremely exciting and dangerous that is happening right now at a, at a civilizational level. So extremely interesting. I'm excited to be talking to you about this. That was actually my plan, but I felt that I first needed to kind of make a genealogy of, of my intellectual growth, if you will. And I, there are going to be some changes with the channel based on this. Uh, I'm going to explain more about this soon enough. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye.